so welcome to plins doctor orientation session now so upsc is recruiting some administrators through civil service exam now what do you think why you have a prelims stage which is of mcq based elimination so elimination can be done in many uh, different methods why only in the mcq format only factual things so uh, do you think in uh, So, to become an IAS officer, so you need to know MCQ method to write an answer in the mains. Okay. So, to administer a district, whether it might be a police department or a revenue department, you need to have certain objectivity for example you have a constitution you have certain fundamental rights you have certain dpsps you need to know certain things for implementation so the objective things are mainly tested here the character or the attitude of objectivity is mainly tested in prelims so they are not actually testing the factual information factual information is also there concepts is also there some logic or reasoning part is also there whether it is gs or csat at the end they are testing your objectivity that means when they ask let's say when they ask a question whether you know it or don't know it whether you are having that attitude of objectivity they believe that is the first quality of an IS officer or a bureaucrat. Okay, now. So, we all study. We have been studying from school or college days. But most of the students fail in this part, the bridging between your knowledge and the application of knowledge. As a bureaucrat, you are not there to, let's say, say something, okay, what is article 21? You are there to apply that knowledge. So even, so most of the students, you just imagine, how many of you have already given prelims attempt? Okay. And the people who are yet to give prelims attempt, you have already written some tests, mock tests here, right? So somewhere, in the exam or in the test when you write or when you uh, face questions you have studied something let's say if a question on uh, let's say president chapter or parliament chapter you have studied but when they pose a question in front of you how you apply that knowledge how you derive an answer that most of the students are missing so knowledge and application of knowledge are two different things you have to understand this so how will you bridge this knowledge and application of that that you have to think it will be different based on different people so individuals are different so try to fi find out your own bridging tools how you connect your knowledge and application of that knowledge and most of the Students usually or aspirants, what mistake they do is from school or college days, we have been taking the test or exams, mainly like we will study some book or professor's notes and in the exam we write the same sentences, if it is a descriptive answer we write the same sentences or if it is MCQ, we expect the same sentence that we have, we have read in the book to be in the exam. If it is somewhat rephrased, 
ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ರೀಫ್ರೇಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ ದೇ ಮೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ ಹಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಕಾಂಪ್ರಹೆಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ so that skill is important for that you need to first accept that the sentence or the questions will not be same like what of read in the book but subconsciously we have trained or we have uh, made our mind in such a way that because that's uh, assume that you till 10th and after that 12th after that graduation for 16 years your mind is processed in such a way that whatever that you read in books should be in the exam subconsciously we ha- our mind has prepared like that only now it is about changing that attitude don't expect that whatever that what you will read in the book will come in the exam so try to find out your own bridging tools between knowledge and application of knowledge what mistakes you are doing while applying the knowledge <clears throat> that so this most of the students will feel this who have written the or who have given the last year attempts and all so i used to get good marks in mock tests but in the exam i got very bad marks this is a common trend so first The reality is that no institute will go near to the UPC trend. To be honest, even our institute also. Don't think that any institute will go near to UPC trend. UPC always tries different dyna- dynamics to change the pattern of the question paper. Okay, everyone will try to reach that standard. But no one will be able to reach that standard. standard in reality so usually what happens is just imagine if you practice one institute paper let's say 50 tests then your mind will be subconsciously prepared to solve that institute test 51st test of that institute not upsc question paper even imagine even from the font what kind of font that institute uses okay you can even uh, think upsc uses a particular font in the actual exam same font prelims question paper also in the same font mains will also be in the same font which is usually in the word it comes as century school font i usually in my courses i usually make sure that the same font will be used in the question paper here also because you also need to be subconsciously prepare your mind even if you see that font you should not get fear you got it so you have to prepare even small that is a very small thing but i believe it will add at least 1% to your confidence that's why when you practice some institute paper and suddenly you go and sit in the exam hall you see a upsc paper there the font is different imagine if you have failed one or two prelims then that font will give you the fear fear because subconsciously you know that oh it is upsc question paper it is difficult so even smallest of the things you try to improve it might be like even for example uh, taking a water bottle to the exam hall or taking something which makes even a smallest change to bring or improve your confidence such small things matter a lot because it is not that you are getting good marks in mock tests it's okay even if you get bad marks in mock tests that is completely fine but you have to improve day by day you have to have the satisfaction that i am improving that is very important and on the exam day how you perform or with what mindset you take the exam 
that is more important you have n number of people here who will not read even uh, let's say uh, two to three weeks for uh, prelims also not even more than two to three weeks they clear prelims people who read six months for prelims like continuously pure hard work you have seen you might have seen n number of people like that but failing prelims because on the exam day performing under pressure that skill or that attitude you have to learn so people who let's say when test happens here so after 16 january when subject by subject will start you will feel that pressure you will feel that i'm not uh, you know coping up with the speed of the test or speed of the subjects so you have to have that attitude my idea why i have kept even the schedule is like that one week one subject that is my idea some people might uh, think that sir lakshmi Khan book will take more than one week to complete imagine how many questions last year have come from lakshmi Khan book imagine even those questions you can answer without lakshmi Khan book also and who told you to read every line in Lakshmi Kant? No need. So, just imagine always when you take up a subject for an IAS officer, what amount of depth of knowledge and what amount of breadth of knowledge is required. That is your boundary. Don't overread, don't do research. You are not here to do PhD. From prelims point of view, taking previous questions as a reference, what is important and what is not important. Every chapter in Lakshmi Khan may not be important. Every line in Lakshmi Khan may not be important. So you have to get that idea from the exam point of view, what is important, what is not important. Okay, so when you have this boundary, then you can finish one subject in one week. So there is, see for prelims, there is no need or there is no content to read a subject more than a week. You don't have that much content. If you are doing that, then either your productivity is less, you are not reading with good productivity or you might be doing overwork or some kind of a donkey work which is not required for the exam okay then so in this exam competitive exam always you will have some uncertainty throughout like from uh, 16 january to let's say may 26 the exam day you will have n number of questions in your mind Will I be able to clear prelims or not? If not, what next? Uh, some like parents will call, friends will call, you then ask so many questions. See, always remember, always worry about the factors which are in your control. Let's say, clearing prelims or the outcome or the result is in your control absolutely not if you are thinking it is in your control then you are a fool what is in your control your work only think about that or if you don't read properly a particular day you have to worry about that not about the result not about some friend who is in the corporate field is earning well don't think about those people so those factors are not not in your control because you have taken a decision and you have come here to give the exam don't worry about the external world your parents might be worried that you are taking more years in this journey but those are not in your control your parents thoughts or your friends thoughts are not in your control imagine the thought see i don't know what thought I will get after a minute. 
I don't know. I don't know. Like I cannot say what thought I will get after a minute. I don't know. That is not in my control at all. Just imagine if your own thoughts which in future are not in your control, then you should not worry about anything else. You should only worry about what is in your control. So your that day's work and that day's work only, not even tomorrow's work also. So most of the religions in the world had, the, had said the same thing. That day's work, so you say like work is worship from one ideology, follow the middle path, Buddhism, all merge into one thing, it is that day's work is only in your control, even not tomorrow's work also. Okay, so in this preparation journey, make your thinking process or thought process very simple, don't make it complex. So you will see, when I mentor, you will have a mentorship session also uh, on a weekly basis. Most of the people ask many things. So you see, even, even your personal issues will also might be there. Someone might be committed also. So you have to give time for all other things also. See, make sure that it is not, it is uh, uh, nothing wrong in having a personal life also in this journey. Don't worry about that, but you have to be professional enough or matured enough to handle both. You give time for the, so this studying for this exam is your profession. You have to do your profession properly in a particular time of the day. Then after that, whatever that you want to do is fine. It's left to you. So that simple formula should be there in your head. Don't make it a complex process. Let's say if you are if not able to study properly, why? Ask very simple question, why? Can you solve it? Yes, solve it. You cannot solve that problem, leave it. Because it is not in your control. It, that's a simple formula. Why? Ask that question. If you can solve it, solve it. If you cannot solve it, leave it. This feedback is very important for a simple formula to, to study with good productivity. Okay. Then. So, UPC exam in 100 questions every year. So, I believe somewhere around 20 to for some people it might be 40 also. 20 to 40 questions can be solved through knowledge that you have studied this content in this book, you know that reasoning part or the logic part, you can answer. But the majority of the questions, more than 60 questions, can be solved if you have a calm attitude in the exam or a calm mindset in the exam. See, just imagine how many of you were very much tense in the exam hall? Usually that a lot of sweating, all that happens in the exam hall? Yes or no? Correct. So just imagine, so when you are feeling that negativity or that tension, it means you are not thinking clearly. If you are taking so much of tension, then first thing is you should change that attitude because they are not looking for a person who is fearful about some exam. For such people, see it is good to have fear because when you have fear, you will push your, yourself to, to do some work. But when it reaches an extreme end, you will not have a clear thinking. They, you basically clearly don't want such people as a, as a bureaucrat. They don't want such people because imagine you are assigned to do a work or responsibility of a district. You will have n number of critical decision making to take up or to do when you become a bureaucrat. If you just take too much of tension when making a decision, 
then you will not, you will not have clear thinking. So they see they are just eliminating those kind of people with just the name of prelims exam. For them, they don't need even to conduct the exam of 100 questions. So, it is not UPS has created that fear around the prelims exam or the prelims stage of UPSC civil service exam. It is maybe the students themselves have taken that fearful uh, atmosphere or might be the institutes. UPSC never said to take tension. UPSC always conducts the exam on Sunday. Why? People who are working for let's say 9-10 hours job also can come and write. This exam is not for the people who are sitting for one year only for preparation and give the exam. This exam is not for the, them also. For everyone. Imagine you have people who are clearing prelims, mains and interview stage also who are working for 9-10 hours every day. So imagine it is not about how much you knowledge you have. That's why they only have 20 to 40 questions which can be answered with knowledge. Majority of the questions it is about if you have a calm mindset in the exam hall on that day if you can clearly think you can answer most of the questions with just common sense. I am saying just common sense but that common sense changes from subject to subject. In polity you have certain common sense. In environment you have certain common sense. To understand that common sense you have to read some simple books. That's it. If you study about let's say about constitution you will have a certain common sense. Oh, okay constitution may you will have central government and state government. Okay what is the structure? How federalism works here? That is the common sense that you need. So, here it is more important for you to get these questions right rather than these questions. For that, for these questions, it is not knowledge, it is skills that will help you. It is the aptitude of MCQ solving. That means, see just imagine in mains, Mains is little bit difficult. Why? Because you only have the question, you don't have the answer. In prelims, you have the question and answer in the question paper itself. Only thing is you have to choose. Correct? That is where you have, like UPC is checking your objectivity. You have true statements and false statements. You have to say which is true, which is false. That's it. So let's say you have black and white, you have to say which is black, it is white. That's it. It is only expecting that objectivity in you. But that objectivity will vary based on subject. Now, so always I believe think about the skills. See, knowledge you will get through classes, you will get through reading different books. But skills is the part which cannot be taught. I cannot teach you the skills. Skills, I can tell you, okay, if you go in this path, you will learn skills. But you have to tread that path. You have to learn those skills by yourself by practicing consistently. And always say, before seeing anything else, only stick on to UPC syllabus. UPSC previous year questions. If you do only these two, you don't need anything else. Always don't see any institute or any faculty or any mentor. You have to keep that person aside, see UPSC directly. Even if I say something, don't believe. You can just take some insights and observe UPSC or analyze UPSC from your own point of view. Then only you will have 
that confidence and calm attitude to face the exam with clear thinking. Just imagine, so you will speak openly in front of your close friend, correct? When someone else comes, you don't know properly, then you will not open up yourself, right? Why? Because your close friend, you have the confidence. So when you analyze UPSC consistently, he will become your close friend. When you sit in the exam hall, you know that it is a letter from UPSC. It is a letter from your close friend. Then you will not have that fear because you, are un you have understood the UPSC pattern or language well. Then you know what even it might there might be some unknown questions or un unconventional questions or difficult questions. But you know what pattern UPSC is using or what tactics UPSC is using. It is just that counter game. There is, a, there is some game you have to counter it. Okay. So this can be understood by some practical examples we will see. So understanding the UPSC language, every exam will have the language. So usually a person who clears civil service exam or UPSC exam will not clear KS or KPS exam easily. A person, so see there are, there are examples where a person who didn't clear FDA exam have cleared the CSE exam. Because every exam is different. It will have its own language. You have to understand that. Okay. So here, as per my analysis in UPSC, you have you'll have sentences in prelims. You will have usually three kinds of sentences. One is general sentences. That means where you will have certain ter terms like can, may, which talks about possibility, possible. So there is word also called possible. Where these talk about possibilities. When UPSC talks about possibility, 99% that statement will be right. Okay, he will use sometimes even some and you will have extreme statements where he will give assertive sentences. That means he might give none, only or sometimes he says instantaneously where they talk about some extreme meaning, assertive. No, this is right. He will say like that. So such statements, be cautious, more than 90% of the times these will be wrong. Okay, then you have some other kind of statement which is called specific statements. These will use is, are, where it's a factual information. Where you, there, he's not talking about possibility also. He's not extremely saying or assertively saying something. Okay, for example, Mahayana Buddhism is a sect of Buddhism. Is he? Is. It is a specific statement. Know it, you know it or don't know it. You don't have any two extreme ends. So, generalistic statements are at one extreme. Extreme statements are another extreme. So, the generalist statements are possibilities. When he talks about possibility, it might be 1%, it might be 99%. He is not sure. That's why he is giving a possibility. When he is sure, he gives such statements in specific you will have a certain specific meaning to that statement. When he is talking assertively, then you will have extreme meaning to that statement. So this, see, and this is not a, this looks like a simple one, but in practical sense, it will be very different. So usually uh, etymology is a term where 
you have to know the meaning or comprehend the meaning of the term by the term itself. I will show you in practical questions where this can be used. So these are your some questions from 23, 22, 21 like that. So this is a 2023 20, question. See the question. Elmlite and rutile abundantly available in certain coastal tracts of India are rich sources of which one of the following. So what is the extreme word here? Abundantly. You got it? It is some assertive statement. Abundantly. Okay. Now, if you see this, he is saying you have some mineral resource and let us say if you know it, you can directly answer. But what happens? Let us say most of the out of 100 questions, I told you, na, somewhere around 20 to 40 will know. Remaining will not know. So, abundantly available in certain coastal tracts. Now, see, among the options, you have aluminium, copper, iron and titanium. Normally, in mineral resources, these are generally known ones. But we don't know. Let us assume that like we don't know what they are asking. But you know the distribution of aluminium, copper and iron. Okay. They are usually found in the interior of the land. Coastal areas and he is saying abundantly. They are not found abundantly in the coastal areas. Iron is found. So in, for, in some regions, it is also found in the coastal areas, but abundantly found in the interior of the land, not in the coastal areas. If you have that clarity or clear thinking, that clear thinking in the exam hall comes with calm attitude or calmness. So, calmness is the first criteria to clear problems. If you have calm attitude, you will have clear thinking. So, you know that these are available in the interior of the land. So, obviously, titan will be the answer. And in UPSC, see, UPSC is not a, I believe he is not a sadistic person. Why is that? There is no need to give this follow up sentence. He could have easily given, Ilnite and Brutile are rich sources of which are the following mineral resource anta, like he could have easily asked that. There is no need to give this follow up sentence. Why he is giving that means he is giving a hint. See this, guess it, guess the answer with what hint I am giving. So he has some empathy towards aspirants that he is giving hint. I am not saying Every question will have a hint, but at least 40 50 questions out of 100 questions will have a hint. This is not common to 2023. You can see any question, most of the questions from 2000, even 1990s, also you can see you will have a hint. Why he is giving that hint? Based on that, he is setting the options. Okay. <clears throat> now, this question. Let's say he is giving two statements and he is trying to establish connection between them. So, marsupials are not naturally found in India. So, let's assume that you don't know what is marsupial and he is saying are not naturally found in India. What kind of statement is it? Specific statement. He is using R. It is a specific statement. Now, marsupials can thrive only in montane grasslands with no predators. What kind of statement is this? You have generalistic word also, you have extreme word also, you have only and no predators. That means this is some kind of an extreme statement. Now, do not just say, think that okay, it is an extreme statement, it will be wrong. Think logically. Can you say this is some animal? Okay. So, can thrive only in montan grasslands with no predators. If it has no predators, that, that means it should be top 
of the food chain. Correct. Have you seen some something related to marsupials where it is top predator? If it is a top predator, then you will know some names from the even the different wildlife in the world. And no predators from environmental common sense doesn't make sense. Correct? With no predators at all. He is saying only in the mountain grasslands and that too with no predators. So you have two extreme words in the same statement and even your environmental common sense is not agreeing to the statement. So then this will be wrong and you will get the answer even because this type of question last time they have set in such a way that if one is wrong you will get the answer directly. Okay, so where Stay, uh, where you have see statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. Statement 1 is incorrect, statement 2 is correct. You do not have an option where both are incorrect. You will get the answer, second one is wrong. Okay. So, every year you will have some biscuits. These are biscuit questions. Where it looks like very difficult factually, but if you see, some mushrooms have medicinal properties. Some mushrooms have psychoactive properties. Some mushrooms have insecticidal properties. Some mushrooms have bioluminescent properties. Always see, in every statement, he is using some. Now, imagine. Now, let us assume that some mushrooms do not have psychoactive properties. How will you get the clarity that some mushrooms will not have the psychoactive property? You should have the confidence, right? You have n number of mushroom species in the world. He will not be sure about that fact that some mushrooms do not have psychoactive properties. To get that answer, UPC has to do some research and establish the fact that mushrooms do not have the psychoactive properties. Okay, it is a very difficult task and let us assume that it is an established fact that mushrooms do not have the psychoactive properties. Then next day only someone might find some mushroom which has psychoactive properties. Then that statement will become wrong. Correct? So, some when you have some in a statement it makes the statement a possibility some might be 0.0001 percent or it might be 99 percent it can be anything in that range so such things will always be right but usually in exam what happens people overthink this happens in the actual exam even you have solved the questions or written a number of tests. But in the exam, we always think, okay, we have, I have not studied it. And some people do like this also. If it is about, let us say they will read the first statement, some mushrooms have medicinal properties like this. They have not read it, they will do this. They will not even read this question after that. See, in such kind of questions, which are very unconventional questions, they are expecting some kind of a common sense. That is it. If you are a friend of UPSC, then you will answer these kind of questions. Because you know your friend better. If you do not know UPSC or your friend, then you will leave this, these kind of questions. Okay. See, in last environment questions in last year and even 2020 to 21 also, they have been asking very unconventional questions, which you will not study in any environment book easily. Okay. So now see this, which of the following organisms perform waggle dance? You do not know what is that dance also for others of their kin. To 
indicate the direction and the distance to a source of their food. Now, among these, see always when you read a question, try to identify the keywords. What are the keywords? Now here the dance is keyword and for me kin is keyword. What do you mean by kin? It's a group or a family, kinship we say, right? Kin. So that is the keyword. Why? See, there, is, there was no need to give the word kin for UPSC. He could have directly given just the dance and uh, what species does this dance. He is giving you the hint. All the keywords in a question are actually hint to you. So you have a kin. That means try to see among the options which one live in a group or family. That's it. Other options or other species that he is giving, they are mostly individual animals or species. Okay. So that is the common sense here. Don't think that it will come from some current affair. See, I agree that these all will be somewhere resourced or sourced from current affairs. But Imagine you cannot read every current affairs that is there in the go on Google because you have n number of newspapers, you have n number of e-magazines. You cannot read all that and remember. Reading is fine. You cannot remember. Our human mind is very limited. You don't have a luxury of let's say 2 TB, 3 TB of memory in your head. You have very limited memory. Whatever you have read last week, you will not remember now. 90% of the things have gone already. So that's why learn these skills so that you will realize after learning all these things for prelims, no need to prepare a lot. No need to read every line in, that, in all the books. If you know the common sense in every subject, you can answer. See this question. So, they are talking about carbon markets are likely to be one of the most widespread tools in the fight against climate change. What kind of statement is this? General or specific? Why general? Why specific? So, you have a likely also. What do you mean by likely? He is talking about possibility. Likely. I am likely to do it. Do some work. Likely, it's possibility. It's a general statement. This will be right. And he is what he is talking about carbon markets likely to be one of the, and he is saying not one of the, he is saying one of the most widespread tools in fighting against climate change. Yes. Carbon markets transfer resources from a private sector to the state. Does it make sense connecting these two? So, carbon markets means what? Let us assume that markets, market is where private entities deal, where capital will flow and he is talking about carbon market transfer resources from private sector to the state. So where companies will give some monetary resources to the state or the government. Does it make sense? Is there any connection? Yes or no? When money is with corporates, will they spend on climate change? Yes or no? Logically, let us say you have 100 crores with Amazon. Will it spend on climate change? When it will spend? When government makes it compulsory for CSR activities. The government should come, then only people will act. <coughs> Correct? So, with this carbon markets, the resources will go from private sector to the government. That is why he is saying it is a widespread tool in fighting against climate change. When it goes to the state or the government or to the public, then they will spend. Then it will become the tool to fight against climate change. Corporate people with capitalism, 
they only want profit they will not worry about pollution and all for this do you need any knowledge in some subject no understand what is capitalism understand why you have a government or a governance or a constitution you will you can answer it <clears throat> okay so here it makes sense because when resources from private sector goes to the state then obviously it will help in the fighting against the climate change now in polity usually the questions will not be directly said what is article 21 or what all the factual information are not asked now you need some time to think now see this one in essence what does due process of law mean you have two things from indian context procedure established by law due process of law what do you what is the difference main difference So, procedure established by law is what is procedure established by law is what legislature makes is procedure established by law. Okay, so when you want to when you want to bring a law, the procedure followed in bringing a law is what procedure is by established by law says right due process of law means it checks whether the law is fair and just correct so what due process of law has compared to procedure established law that extra element is checking that fairness of the law or justice of the law just law means it's is it giving a justice or not correct so the extra element is justice are you getting my point the extra element is justice in the options where is justice that will be the answer see it is not see most of the institutes have given fair application of law as as the answer also but due process law don't worry about after the law how you apply that is not important there is the law the features in the law make some justice or not let's say you bring a law let's say in the parliament you bring a law that okay so community from people from this community should go out of india if you bring a law like that then you assume that you follow this all the procedures in the parliament then you have fulfilled the procedure of the law but is the law fair is it giving justice no that extra element is there in the due process of law fair application of law comes for whom implementers bureaucrats he due process of law is not talking about that due process of law is talking about justice always in the answer if you don't know most of the options here try to pick a option which is which has broad meaning for me principle of natural justice contains this also this also this also and you cannot say no sir because principle of natural justice is so broad that it engulfs everything that's why always choose a broad answer or a broad term always you see most of the UPC answers will be broad there are n number of political questions asked on liberty asked on constitution or asked on rule of law these things all the answers in such kind of questions will be broad answers just think fair application of law principle natural justice is there it comes it's a 
सब पार्ट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल नेचुरल जस्टिस ओके नो दिस इज अगेन अनदर कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल क्वेश्चन सो वॉट इज फेस वंस द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट नोटिफाइज एन एरिया एज अ कम्युनिटी रिजर्व the chief wildlife warden of the state becomes the governing authority of the of such forest hunting is not allowed in such area people of such area are allowed to collect non timber forest produce people of such area are allowed traditional agricultural practices now i know that answers from different institutes are different for this question but what is the main difference between community reserves and other protected areas so community reserve means owner is the community because that land will be either private land or community land owner should be community so if owner should be the community then the chief wildlife warden of the state who is some officer of from the government should not be the authority so separately you have a community reserve management committee which is again people from the that area that gram sabha region those will be the authority so they will elect a person who will be a wildlife warden of that area he will be the authority see even if you see the sources different sources mention different things but if you think from the fundamental rights point of view if it's your own land either private individual or community if it is your own land then someone will not be the authority government will not be, will not be the authority okay then if it is a community based reserve then hunting is not in allowed such areas because the prime reason of community reserve why will establish community reserve to protect wildlife because community reserve comes under wildlife protection act you have to conserve the wildlife that's why hunting is not allowed it makes sense this is right people of such area are allowed to collect non timber forest produce so it is community and it is non timber forest produce usually from forest tribal people can take non timber forest produce also it is right people of such area are allowed traditional agriculture practices now here so what do you believe if it is a community reserve do you think agriculture practice or traditional agriculture practice should be allowed or not why why not ask why not always in upsc ask the question why not if you get a clear answer then that statement will be wrong if you don't get the clear answer then the statement will be right i see usually if i want to answer this question for me this traditional word is the key here as a community it is your duty also to maintain or propagate that traditional practices yes imagine on one end if they are saying traditional agriculture practices which is polluting the environment then there is no criteria or th there is no duty to do, do that but it is a community and community reserves comes under wildlife protection act your duty is to conserve the wildlife for me if it is you are propagating your traditional ideas then i don't think so your anyone has an issue okay always think when you are in doubt in exam always think why not 
So for me, this should be the answer. I don't know what UPSC will give the answer. And even if it gives only three as the answer, because some institutes have given only three also, but you will not know which one is wrong, which one is right. That is the problem in this kind of questions. <clears throat> now, in history, you will have uh, different term based questions. Now, in this type of questions only, I told you. So, here it is talking about which one of the following explain the practice of Vatta Kirutal as mentioned in Sangam poems. Now, this is a term understanding or comprehending the meaning of the term from the term itself is called etymology and the healthy. Now, you know that they are talking about Sangam poems. The word looks also like a Tamil word, which you don't know. Now, but at least uh, if a question is asked from the southern Indian languages, it is easy for even Karnataka, uh, uh, Telugu uh, population, Malayalam and Tamil population also somewhere because all these languages are connected. What I usually do in the exam is that see the word. Do you have any similar word in your language? So, if you see this word, I think this word is made up of two words. I feel it. I feel I don't know. Watta plus Kirutal. This is what you do in language. Now, like in Canada, we used to do this in uh, finding out sandhi and samasa correct so this term has two words vatta and kirutal i don't know what what is vatta kirutal somewhere you have this word in kannada also i believe so what is similar word here kirutal so just see the options kings employing women bodyguards so it is talking about women learned persons assembling in royal courts discuss religious and philosophy matters now, so it is talking about learned persons. Young girls keeping watch over agricultural fields, driving away birds and animals. So it is talking about young girls or this one. So now you see, you have two common things here. You all, always try to connect. A king defeated in a battle is committing ritual suicide by starving himself to death. So it is talking something related to violence. So out of the options, do you see some Kannada word or in your language where this word connects? So, Kirutal. So, in Kannada, you have a word called Kirataka, which is somewhere related to violence. I don't know my logic is right or not, but you will get the answer. Because for me, every time it worked. Because if you have you had questions in uh, his, uh, UPSC from history only, your question on Hundi. You had a question on this term called Hundi. I think in 2021, I guess. In Canada, Hundi means it's a Devi Dudda Aktiwala. Correct? There was only one option which related to money. That was the answer. Similarly, you had a word called in one year, it, it was something related to Phanam. So, in the exam hall, you just need, okay, Phanam. You think that way. But is there any similar word? Phanam. Phanam. That was the answer. Phanam means money. So, you have these kind of questions from history. You can go and see. I have some questions also. Always, in history, Try to use your language skills. Okay. Sometimes it goes against your will. Sometimes it gets wrong. It's fine. Okay. Because usually you imagine any learned skill per skilled person, skilled man. Virat Kohli will not hit century every game. Somewhere he'll get he'll get out. It's fine still. So always you have to have that guts or confidence in your thinking capability. Okay, so from this only connection I got 
What's this? Which might for some people might be saying, sorry, Tukka. But when you do that work by yourself, you will know that confidence. If someone says Tukka also, it's fine. But you know that I know UPSC. UPSC will set questions like this. Even, see, for me, every time it will not be right. If I put 10 questions like this, 2 to 3 will be wrong. 6 to 7 will be right. You imagine 6 to 7, you will get how much extra marks? You will get like 7 right, 3 wrong. Take 6 right, 4 wrong. You will get 12 marks minus 3 marks. 9 marks you will get bonus. Other people will leave those questions. I have got 9 marks extra. You can clear forest service cutoff with that extra marks. So these are the two questions last year from history. So we talked about Korkai, Pumpar and Muziris. And something related to a, uh, you have a constructed a large dam across Tungabad river. These two questions are literally from your previous questions of history. Two questions in 2023, which was a very difficult question paper, two questions directly from previous questions of history. This question I think was asked in 2015 and this question maybe 10 years before. Imagine, that's why previous questions are so important. Sometimes you will get the direct questions itself. Now, sometimes in the exam hall, you will get very weird questions. And applying common sense in science and science and technology is very easy. Even if you are, if you are, if you are from arts or commerce background, it is very easy. For engineers, s &D questions are difficult. Why? Because I am also an engineer, science person. Engineers or science people are always overthink. They think that, oh, here you see the question, it is talking about accelerometer. Then they will think about oh, Newton's law of motion, what is that? This is, no need. You just see the question. What is talking in how many of the above actions is the function of accelerometer is required? What do you mean by accelerometer? You don't, let's assume that you don't know. What is, what you can comprehend from it? Accelerometer. Accelerometer, what is, you can. Uh, measuring acceleration. So, you are measuring acceleration. What do you mean by acceleration? Huh? Huh? Rate of change of velocity. So, there is some change in the velocity, speed. Can you get this? At least from the word? No. You see, detection of car crash or collision which results in deployment of airbags almost instantaneously. Is there any change in velocity? When you hit a car? Yes. That is the answer. That is it. Change in velocity is there. Obviously, it can be measured by accelerometer. Second one. Detection of accidental free fall of a laptop towards the ground which results in immediate turning of the hard drive. Change in speed. So usually what happens if uh, electronic device is there, when it falls, there is change in speed because it is constant. There is change in speed. Detection of the tilt of the smartphone which results in rotation of display between portrait and landscape mode. Change in speed. Yes or no? See, when you see the question, you feel that oh, accelerometer, I don't know what it is, I have not studied. Actually, when you see such kind of questions, you should be happy. Why I am saying is this, when you, are half, when you have half knowledge or when you are confused, we always make mistake. Why is because we always rely on memory. Remember, 
when you have full knowledge on a question then your memory helps when you have half knowledge or when you are confused then don't believe memory you just kick the memory only think from the common sense or logical point of view then you will get the correct answer because if you have if you are confused then memory will deceive you always think from the common sense point of view you will get the answer <coughs> now in this question with reference to the role of biofilters in recirculating aquaculture system what do you mean by biofilters bio filter you are filtering using some biotic thing some living being now bio filters provide a waste treatment by removing uneaten fish feed make sense or not you are filtering something you are treating the waste both are similar same meaning Biofilters convert ammonia present in fish waste to nitrate. Ammonia to nitrate, he is saying. Now, let us assume that like you do not know. But is ammonia a pollutant or waste? Yes or no? You have the clarity or not? If you do not have the clarity, let us see. Biofilters increase phosphorus as nutrient for fish in water. In aqua system, in water related ecosystem, if nutrients increase, what happens? Eutrophication happens. Correct? That means you are filtering something. That means you have to reduce the waste. So your biofilters will not increase the phosphorus, it will decrease the phosphorus. Okay. If you increase the nutrient, then eutrophication will happen. That, that concept of eutrophication, you think it is knowledge. I think it is common sense. Common sense from environment point of view. If you know that if you increase nutrients, then eutrophication happens, then this is wrong. It will not increase, it will decrease. Okay, that is one point or there is another point also in the water there was some previous question also phosphorus is not soluble in water that is also one point where you can admit this phosphorus is not soluble in water so in the aqua system usually it will not increase in that way because it is not soluble in water so that point of we also you can admit third one now Usually, when you see the different pollutants in water, ammonia is also a pollutant. So, when it is converting ammonia to nitrate, that means it is filtering. Okay. That way also you can answer this, that this is right. So, green hydrogen was in news last year that is why this question was asked with reference to green hydrogen consider the following statements it can be used directly as a fuel for internal combustion now you have can be which makes the statement general and you have directly also which makes little bit of assertiveness it can be blended with natural gas and used as a fuel for heat or power generation can be general statement can be is a possibility so in literal meaning of can be what in Canada can be means it is a possibility. It can be used in the in hydrogen fuel cell to run vehicles. Again, can be. Only thing where you have to worry is this. Okay, it is okay even if you put only two as the answer or all three as the answer. For me, hakak agala direct like let us say it cannot be directly used as a fuel for internal combustion. Do you have the logic for that? 
if you have answer for that then you have to put first one as wrong otherwise you have to take the confidence or guts to put everything is right because it's a general statement so this is again if you see all are general statements So, this is again you can try to use the etymology concept here. Aerial metagenomics best ref refers to which one of the following situations. Now, you have a word called aerial that means something related to air. Metagenomics, do you know what is the meaning of this? Do you know genomics? So, genome, huh. specifically genomics means? Okay, so it is something related to genome. Now, metagenomics. Do you know what is the meaning of meta? You use meta somewhere also. Where? Metaverse. What is the meaning of metaverse? Huh? Applied? Like. You have some other word also metadata. What is the meaning? Data gives some information. Metadata actually gives information about this data. It will not give direct. For example, you have metadata in your mobile phones also. I think uh, digital security, he has discussed what is data and metadata in uh, digital security class also. So it gives a data which gives information about other data. Among the options, try to see wherever, wherever you have air. So you have air here also. So in most of, so understanding the genetic makeup of avian species is trying to say that it is air using airborne devices to collect blood samples from the moving animals, sending drones to inaccessible areas. So here you don't have any air related thing directly. So, you can safely eliminate these kind of options. So, now out of this genome, now using airborne devices to collect blood samples from moving animals. So, how will you do this practically? He is just trying to make up a statement which does not make sense. See, using airborne devices to collect blood samples from moving animals. How will you do it? He is just trying to make up some statement and does blood samples or anything that you are doing is any directly connected to genome? No. So the only thing is where you have gene and air, it is, it is again indirect are only these two options. Now when you see this, always try to see which one uh, hits you, which statement hits you or which statement is strong or standard. So understanding the genetic makeup of avian species of a habitat. So you are just understanding the genetic makeup, you are not collecting anything. Just understanding, you are not collecting anything or you are not taking from any, uh, from air. So which is the real meaning of the statement comes from this collecting DNA samples from air in a habitat at one go. You have genome which is DNA, you have aerial air. Simple connection between the terms. So in exam, this helps a lot. But problem is in the exam, our mind will be very complex to think simply. So think simple in the example. Don't make your thought process very complex. Now, 
So here you have R2 code of practices constitutes a tool available for promoting the adoption of. Now you don't know, you just know R2 code of practices. Okay, now you have the term R2. When you see the question, you will not know anything, but you have R2. So, any code or anything, the name comes from the meaning of the or objective of that code itself. Your name has some significance. This name also has some significance. So, you have R2. That means, always, uh, you see this. Uh, for example, we always say in short form, IUCN. Okay. Like this, right? Short forms. It will have some meaning. Always, you, even if you see the schemes of the government, it will be short form. So, that short form, you will have meaning of, when you elaborate it, you will get the meaning of the actual scheme. So, here, it is about R2 code of practices. That means, in the options, try to find out the keywords which start from R. That is the common sense here. Where you have R, environmentally responsible practices in electronics recycling, ecological management of wetlands of international importance under Ramsar Convention, sustainable practices in the cultivation of agriculture crops in degraded lands, environmental impact assessment in the exploitation of natural resources. Now, in the options, you have three options with R, but two R's are there in one option. That will be the answer. And you see, the name of R2, because I had given this prelims, I know, after coming out, I checked this, R2 is responsible recycling, that's it. It is responsible recycling code of practices, that is the name. And in these kind of questions, I told you, so it is about etymology, try to get the meaning of the term from the term itself. And always see in the options, if you have anything which is uh, futuristic, always UPSC has asked a lot of uh, questions on environment. In the options, if it is something not much important, that will not be the answer. UPSC will not worry about the peripheral things. It will always focus on that very important core areas. In this question, which one of the following is used in preparing a natural mosquito repellent? So, we are talking about different uh, plant species, gr congress grass, elephant grass, lemon grass, nut grass. Now, you don't know anything about those uh, plant species. Now, the question is talking about natural mosquito repellent. How do you repel mosquitoes at your home? So, using some either a coil okay or that machine where the mosquitoes will be repelled because of the smell of those chemicals correct always remember all the wildlife they have the power of observing the surroundings through smell it might be tiger elephant most of the wildlife humans are evolved to observe the surroundings through eyes. But most of them, they have a strong smelling ability. So now here, you have like something related to smell. See the options, which one has strong smell? That's it. That is the answer. Don't think that sir, lemongrass 
might not have the spell how do you know it see why they will name lemon grass with the name lemon there is some common thing between lemon grass and lemon tree that's why they have given the name otherwise they will not give the same name there is some connection related to smell so such questions look very factual okay now <clears throat> this is factual but imagine so whom of the following is associated with songs from prison a translation of ancient indian religious lyrics in english now if someone wants to write songs from prison then that person must have spent a lot of time in prison among the options who have spent a lot of time in prison one is tilak correct tilak also spent lot of years around like 14 years continuously and gandhi ji got it you will arrive at two answers if you know that okay to write see obviously if you spend one month in a prison you will not write about songs like any any anything related to songs why is because initially you will take some time to adjust to that environment you will not write on the first day some poem or songs it is human tendency right when you spend lot of time then you realize that i'll be here for many years okay i'll do something else also so then now a translation of ancient indian religious lyrics in english now who among tilak and gandhi who can write in english it is not that he must know english both will know english but it is based on ideology a person who is conservative will not write in english tilak is known for extremist he has that conservative attitude he will not propagate his ideas in english he doesn't like english he likes marathi he likes his his traditions such person will not write in english in english this thing no one will teach you correct you have to understand okay tilak is a extremist so there is there are less chances that he might be written uh, uh, writing something in english a little bit liberal person will write in english answer is gandhi ji so you have to use these kind of very maybe intrinsic common sense now in polity sometimes they'll ask these kind of questions which will not be usually in the lakshmi kant book also so he says judicial custody means an accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate and such accused is locked up in police station not in jail second statement during judicial custody police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect without approval of the court judicial custody means what he is in the custody of the judiciary one see this question can be answered if you are a movie lover this logic or the you know knowledge will not come from lakshmi kant book you have seen somewhere in movies always they show you this if someone is arrested they'll beat him in the police station first before presenting him to, him to the court because once you they'll say na we have to present him to the court tomorrow we have to get the evidence right they'll say this police officers right why because once he is sent to the court then he will be under the judicial custody then you have to take the permission of the court to investigate now in the first statement they are only saying judicial judicial custody means the accused sorry the uh, accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate 
such accused is locked up in police station it is an contradictory statement he should be in jail jails so if he is in jail then he will be in judicial custody if he is in police station he is under the police he is only saying he should be in the custody of my state but he is locked up in police station no it is a contradictory statement he is wrong so during judicial custody the police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect without the approval of the court yes that is what the meaning of judicial custody so in the exam when you get some topics which you haven't studied formally don't leave those such kind of questions try to see the question what they are saying sometimes in the exam hall in some sentences they'll give contradictory statement in the same statement itself you have to just have that patience to see now do you know uh, mahayana buddhism so what is the main difference between mahayana and hinayana buddhism mahayana means in terms of ideology mahayana is little bit idol worship more liberal in terms of rituals correct hinayana is rigid it follows a specific things they will not come out of that zone now he is saying stavira vadins belong to mahayana buddhism now you don't know what is stavira vadin leave it what do you mean by this word stavira in kannada you have a word called stavira what do you mean by that permanent permanent that means who who believed in actual buddhist thought which is hinayana stavira stava means which is constant correct which is constant that means this belongs to hinayana or older thought lokottara vada lokottara lokottara artha eno you have this word in kannada also huh lokottara can you see some these two words are same or opposite opposite, opposite. then this should be mahayana or that ideology okay now the deification of buddha by mahasangikas foster the mahayana buddhism what do you mean by this word dt that means god so mahayanas believed in god correct a statue so hinayana people don't say buddha is a god he is a master they say whereas mahayana people they say he is god they are talking about they got that idea from mahasangika so your ma see there is common thing mahasangika mahayana that is both believe in the similar ideology maha that means little bit liberal broad you have the meaning there only loka maha both are same see if you see the statements a little bit with a zoomed version you can say that loko and maha both are same you have the answer in the question itself only thing is you have to connect this looks like a factual question but without that knowledge or that factual information you can solve that's why always try to understand the concept mahayana and hinayana what is the main difference in ideology if you understand that you can solve most of the questions now <clears throat> so this is again a word where you try to understand the meaning of this word paramitas can you get meaning from that word paramitas 
ನಿಮ್ಮ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಗುತ್ತಾ ಲೈಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಎನಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಟ್ ಪರಮಿತಾಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಪರಂ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ಲೈಕ್ ಸಿ ದ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದ ಅರ್ಲಿಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಇನ್ ಅಫರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದ ಅಥಾರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಅಟೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಟು ದ ಬುಲ್ಸ್ ಅಥವಾ ಪಾತ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಮರ್ಚೆಂಟ್ ಗಿಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಮಿಡಿವಲ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ನೋ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ a god who is perfect so you have the answer you can get a different way also like based on your understanding but among if you see the statements you will like this statement will hit you hard a little bit a standard statement okay so param means what literal meaning you will have the name also param anta hesaru irutte like for some people what is the meaning ha huh? first or is there any other meaning eternal permanent or out of the world all uh, like all those words will come to the point here they are talking something related to perfection a perfect human being is eternal correct so we'll get the answer so in history or culture or any other questions also if you have a term try to get the meaning of the term then you'll get the answer so now in india why are some nuclear reactors kept under iaea safeguards while others are not iaea andre en gotta international atomic energy agency okay now you let's say you don't know it now see the statements or options some use uranium and others use thorium when you read this what you'll get something related to atomic minerals and they're talking about nuclear reactors something related to atomic or nuclear reactor they're talking some use imported uranium and some use domestic supplies so it is something related to imported and domestic some are operated by foreign enterprises and other are operated by domestic enterprises so it is talking about foreign enterprises and domestic enterprises then some are state owned and others are privately owned now is atomic energy allowed for private people in india then these two options doesn't make sense first of all it is not like you will not you don't allow atomic energy or, uh, for nuclear reactors to establish for private people there is no point of foreign enterprises then these two are absolute bullshit if you know the logic of atomic energy is monopoly of the government for the national security purpose now answer is only between these two now what is the logic uranium and thorium imported and domestic can you get some logic if it is imported from some other country then your international agency will be there to see or to regulate whether that atomic mineral is used for good purpose or bad purpose whether you are producing energy from it or nuclear weapons from it correct you have a logic here this at least if you eliminate these two that is more than good or enough that means when you eliminate this then you are focusing properly in the exam hall then you can think clearly so i know that in exam hall you will have n number of factors or issues in your head all that but always think 
you have worked for one year for that two hours or that two plus two four hours don't put the burden of this one year on those four hours you have to have very free mind for those four hours then you will sail through this stage easily now see the question under the kisan credit card scheme short term credit support is given to farmers for which of the following purpose always see the follow up statement short term credit support that is the key here in the options which is short term support working capital of for maintenance of farm assets working capital purchase of combined harvesters tractors and mini trucks so technology or some infrastructure purchase made beko andre you need long term support short term antandre for sh short period of time with short monetary per value so this is long term capital or support that you need consumption requirements of farm households consumption is short term post harvest expenses short term construction of family house setting up village and cold storage facility which is long term here it is not about kisan credit card scheme it is about just seeing the statement and choosing the options that's it i again tell you this absolutely there was no need for upsc to give this following statement they are giving you because they have some empathy or they are expecting persons or they are they want to select aspirants who can focus under enormous pressure only that attitude they are expecting not that you have to study n number of books and become a very knowledgeable person the basic criteria is who can perform under pressure they are testing that attitude in you so this was 2022 question again related to wildlife protection act okay now see the question wild animals are the sole property of the government what do you mean sole property complete property when a wild animal is declared protected such animal is entitled for equal protection whether it is found in protected areas or outside makes sense let's say if a tiger comes out of the national outside the national park like it just we are waiting for tiger to come out and then we kill that is not the purpose of act right so whether it is outside or inside it should be protected apprehension of a predated wild animal becoming a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its capture and killing apprehension means ha huh? a fear or a doubt i'll just say there was so i have a house near the national park let's say outside the national park i have a doubt that today tiger will come eat me i'll kill that can i say like that no it doesn't make sense correct only apprehension of something cannot be the criteria to kill a wild animal and you saying sufficient ground no unless it tries to attack you in the self defense you can kill that animal but not that just you have some apprehension and you can just go and kill so this makes absolute a nonsense statement okay so <clears throat> here now your answer this is right you have two only and one and two so now do you think wild animals are the sole property of the government so sole property government might have certain part of the property because government is also part of the society wild animals are the actual property of the nature government is part of the nature in that nature you have tribal people also you have n number of things everything 
is a part of the nature not that okay government only says wildlife is comp wild animal is completely my property if that is the case all the politicians will eat everything okay so this is absolutely a extreme statement you can see the answer of this from previous institute uh, sorry uh, from from different institutes in 2022 key answers but i think upsc has given this as wrong one now so this is talking about monazite sand let's assume that you don't know about monazite monazite is a source of rare earths monazite contains thorium monazite occurs naturally in the entire coastal sands of india in india government bodies only can process or export monazite now so all this is a specific statement this is also a specific statement from thorium you will get to know that okay this is something related to atomic mineral source okay now if you get that in india government bodies only can process or export monazite it makes sense because government has the monopoly or atomic minerals only government can do it if you allow someone else they might use that to make nuclear weapons that's why government will not allow it makes sense because it's a atomic mineral now one of the occurs naturally in the entire indian coastal sands in india entire that means everywhere <clears throat> it it is a very extreme statement obviously you will have some some distribution right it's not continuously entirely available in every uh, coastal state or coastal area so it makes this one extreme statement okay so you'll get the answer if you eliminate such kind of extreme statements and you try to see you know that if you know that atomic mineral or atomic sphere is a monopoly of the government then such kind of concept is uh, they have asked year by year year on year they are asking the similar type of questions there it, it was about IEA safeguards here it is about monocyte concept is same so here they are talking about web 3.0 it enables people to control their own data it's a specific statement in web 3.0 world there can be blockchain based networks he is talking about can be it's a possibility web 3.0 is operated by users collectively rather than a corporation now collectively and people both are similar it is collectively that means users should come together that means people if in the answer this is anyway right either it should be only to or it should be all if this is right then this should be right because both the statements are same but in a different language or sense they are giving both are same so here it is talking about enables people to control their own data users collectively that means people are the owners here okay so all are right because both are same here you don't have two only option okay so here software as a service that means service means providing that service and you pay for that software as a service you are providing software software as a service now so short form is SaaS. SaaS buyers can customize the user interface and can change data fields it's a possibility SaaS users can access their data through their mobile devices outlook hotmail yahoo mail are forms of SaaS. So your Gmail, out, Outlook, Hotmail are old kind of mails. Now you will not use all this. Yahoo was there previously. In our generation, not your generation. Okay. So those are softwares. And you are using them as a service. Correct? You don't have any big kind of a concept or knowledge here. The name only says everything is there in the statement which is according to the name itself software as a service okay 
see when you get this logic or UPSC pattern science and technology questions are actually the easiest questions you have to pray after you understand all this you have to pray that okay there should be more science and technology questions now so government of india 1919 you had diarchy okay so what do you mean diarchy so they will divide the subjects into reserved and transfer subjects so reserved subjects are kept by whom by the governor that means the britisher transfer means to the so to the local people where ministers will be there popular ministers now imagine for britishers what is important to control the power they need police sorry so for british people where you have reserved subjects are kept with the british people police should be there for control land revenue should be there justice should be there local self government is a burden now also local self government is a burden for the abo government that's why tallavu yak beko tallavu kelagade bidana avare maadkolli so always britishers shied away from the responsibilities they only wanted the rights ah land revenue money ha ah, it should be my part so if you see it that way this was a not in their purview they don't want also so even if you don't know even if you pick the odd one out then you will get the answer now so rapid financing instrument rapid credit facility are related to provisions of lending by which one of the following now see this you have a common word called rapid that is a key when you need rapid credit crisis or some kind of emergency you see asian development bank international monetary fund un nation environment program finance initiative world bank so world bank gives normally loan for development development is long term it is not that you will get the loan like this asian development bank this also gives name of this says asian development bank it gives loan for development which are usually long term and it is not for any crisis or emergency the only body which gives money for emergency or crisis is IMF. That's why they are specifically mentioning rapid, rapid, rapid in the question itself. It's okay even if you don't know the factual information. But try to think from the point of view, what are the functions of these bodies? Next, so GS is one part, now CSAT. So, so why do you think CSAT has become a barrier? Especially people have already given some attempts. I believe it is not that UPC, okay, UPC is trying to make it a trickier one or a difficult one, but we also from aspirants uh, side you have also done a lot of mistake or ignorance from your point of view and somewhere upsc also also has played some kind of a game here so from 2015 when it has become a just a qualifying one so initially they have given very easy question papers most of the people thought that okay it is very easy they have taken it as very lightly. Now they have started increasing the difficulty level. Now, if you are thinking that CSAT paper will be easy this time because last time it was difficult. Don't think like that. UPSC's CSAT paper in 2024 will be more difficult than the 2023 paper. Why I am saying is this because 
the kind of questions that UPSC can ask in CSAT paper, it has oceans of different patterns of questions that it might ask. Because you have still tougher exams than your CSAT paper of CSE like CAT exam, like SSC exam. There already you have set patterns of questions lying. UPSC is just doing that work. It is just picking the question from SSC and CAT exam and asking here. Now obviously when you have such kind of easy resources, UPSC will not go to the, the backward step and ask easy question. No. I, for me, I cannot see that trend. I can see the question paper of CSAT will become difficult in the next coming years also. For him, the just for him, the question paper sector of CSAT, it is just that you pick some question from CAT, change the numbers. That's it. That's it. That is what he is doing. So we, you have to analyze that and try to solve at least the basic patterns of questions from this. Even little bit of SSE pattern, little bit of CAT pattern. You have to be little bit more serious. We always study a lot or give more effort for GS paper. But very less time we spend on CSAT thinking that it is just a 33% passing mark. And always think like most of the students have a goal that okay 67 marks is the goal for them. If you say CSAT ah, 67 marks is enough. But you know that if you aim for 67 marks you will not get 67 marks definitely because human nature is is in such a way that you aim for 100 marks you will not get 100 marks because our productivity somewhere reduces. So you will get somewhere below 100 only. So always aim high. So to like when you aim high you have to put similar efforts also. So the barrier is your own mind or your own thought, not the UPSC questions. I can see very less people like even after let us say one or two failures in CSAT, they will not take CSAT seriously. That is the major, see it is not something related to UPSC, it is related to you. You are not taking CSAT seriously, that is why you are failing. Even for, it applies to even engineers also. Okay. And here, see you need to have some certain strategy. So, if you see the last year question, they are asking more questions from number system, permutation combination. For like, for my students last year, I told, I told them that permutation combination chapter in 2022, they are asked around 4 to 5 questions. 2023, they increased the number of questions. Some people might have thought that last year 4 or 5 questions, this time maybe similar questions or they might reduce to make the question paper easier. They have doubled the questions in permutation combination. You see what mindset UPC has. See, it is not focusing on the people who will take things easily. It is trying to make it difficult because it wants to select people who perform better under pressure. I will give you difficult questions, solve it. It is posing the challenge, you have to put similar efforts. Okay, So just from number system and permutation combination chapter, you had more than 30-35 questions last year. Imagine 30-35 questions. And especially number system chapter questions, you can easily solve if you know the concepts. So it is about the strategy, it is about your mindset. Somewhere your mindset has become rigid. You have to be again humble enough like a kid, like a school going kid to learn the concepts, to practice consistently. Don't think that I know everything. You will realize the penalty in the exam hall. Okay, then. So, 
somewhere upsc also have, has trying has been trying to make it trickier because in the syllabus of csat you have different topics but upsc has been removing the topics which are easy so previously they used to ask questions on syllogism chapter in reasoning like you every year three to four questions average from syllogism 2023 they have removed that chapter completely or maybe one question they have asked you see the trend they are trying to eliminate the questions which are from easy chapters they are asking more questions from difficult chapters upsc is studying you upsc studying you what kind of chapters that students are practicing for like for my knowledge I have been told that upsc has a research team which will try to research about okay what kind of resource these people are studying and with what kind of mindset they are studying they are trying to play with that mindset they are trying to have a game which you cannot counter easily that's why they are asking more questions from number system on uh, permutation combination on even reading comprehension they are trying to make the questions little bit subjective so based on your individual weakness and strength you have to decide which section you will solve first reading comprehension or logical reasoning or aptitude part you have to have so certain strategy like for example each question what is the cut off time limit don't take let's say if you are good at let's say some chapter of uh, let's say business maths profit and loss and percentage if you stuck in some question of percentage of profit and loss don't just spend time don't hurt your ego in the exam hall i'm not getting the, this answer i'm an engineer i have to get it no don't think like that if you are taking more time leave that question solve other questions in csat paper the major issue most of the students face is which question is difficult for for them and which question is easy to identify that they are taking more time you have to identify a question okay this question is easy for me this question is difficult when you read a question in if if you are taking more than 1 hour for 2 minutes for one question you should not solve even if you if you are getting a even if you get the answer let's say i will get the answer in another two steps don't do it leave it and you have to go to the next question you should not keep any emotions there then only you will solve more questions but every year at the end most of the people will come sir i have solved only 35 questions 30 questions 32 questions less than 40 questions only you have to attempt more than 45 50 questions because even if he is from a like very intelligent person in math he will not have 100% accuracy so you have to solve more questions with good accuracy at least more than 80 85% accuracy then only you will get good marks above that cut off of 67 if you if your marks lies somewhere around there 67 after your prelims for one month you will not read anything because you will have the doubt whether i will clear prelims or or not somewhere most of the, everyone after the exam you, if you ask any person so somewhere around the cutoff i am getting csat csat marks is somewhere around the cutoff so your mind will be completely in a uncertain way whether you prepare mains or not so don't be in that zone have an high aim of marks work towards that so little bit more seriousness is required in csat because see there are so many students who have been getting good marks in gs paper one not clearing csat paper for them it is just their ego is stopping them that's it i'm not saying anything else it is just their ego you have to be more humble to practice consistently that <clears throat> see upsc is expecting some kind of a broad perspective that each aspirant has to understand that is this
See, you don't need an intelligent, intelligent person to clear this exam. An average person who can do some work consistently without worrying what marks other person has got or how he is performing. In the exam hall, when you get the question paper, everyone will be in an uncertain way, losing their mind. Oh, this question I have not said it. Oh, this I know, but I am in confusion. So, those people will be losing their mind. They are not focusing clearly. A person who can clearly focus in the exam hall, who can have that clear thinking consistently throughout those two hours, he will sail through this stage. You don't need a very intelligent person to clear this exam or prelim stage. A person who can perform under pressure. So who will not have the issues that you are facing? Everyone will have those doubts, whether I will clear it or not. Everyone's parents will be asking or even some, some parents might be doubting also whether my son or daughter will be able to clear this exam or not. Everyone will have the doubt. See, imagine you only have doubt on yourself. Others will also have the doubt. It is common. So you should not worry about that. Who can think clearly during that exam time? So always remember those four hours are very important. Whatever that you do in this time, if you mess up in those four hours, then the effort that you have put in the last six months or one year, that will be gone. And that regret you will have. So don't that make that mistake. But to get that confidence or to get that calm attitude, I told you again, like I am telling you again this, you have to understand UPSC better. Then you will have inherent confidence that okay, whatever the kind of question that comes, I have the skill to answer those kind of questions. That confidence will come from your own work, your own consistent practice of previous questions. So, so this course will be usually done in this way every week. But you have a schedule also. So we are starting with polity on uh, 16th January Tuesday. So since 15th January was a festival, that's why we should wait to 16th. Otherwise, every week we'll have class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 5 to 7:30 in the evening. So not uh, disturbing your other classes in the daytime. And in the first class, usually I will discuss, for example, if it is polity, polity's previous questions, I will take all that. From that, I will derive which are all the topics which are important for prelims. From the proof of the previous questions, these are the topics you have to study and to what depth. What depth and what breadth. I will try to establish this. Polity, what is the depth and what is the breadth that you have to study. And on second and third class, I will try to discuss the unconventional questions that are there in the polity or important topics from polity. Let us say if you do not have the content to read for that subject, you can ask me, sir, what to read for prelims for polity. I will suggest some very crisp materials and you can only refer that from prelims point of view. And every Sunday you will have test. For example, for first week, polity classes, Sunday, polity full and test. So my idea is one week, one subject. Whatever that happens in your personal life, you have to complete polity in that week itself. Don't push that to next week because next week some other subject will be starting. I know that it will be a little bit difficult target or a little bit difficult schedule to follow. But if the schedule is tight, then you will push yourself to work hard, to, pour, to put more efforts, to work consistently. Otherwise, you will just be lenient or you will reduce your productivity. 
that's why the even the schedule is not so hectic also it is just the alternative days classes okay so this is the idea so in between you will also have csa classes so where i'll discuss mostly the important topics like uh, number system permutative combinations and the strategy point of view okay and every week you'll have a uh, mentorship sessions also for 15 to 20 minutes every like there will be schedule you have to come and meet so at the end it is always about the strong mental attitude is very important for this exam when you have strong mental attitude whether you clear it or you don't clear it or whether you clear prelims or not that is not in your control leave it your work is in your control so for that you should have strong mental attitude okay that any questions or queries that you have you don't have any questions about the schedule or anything like that so you'll have 18 sectional tests and uh, 10 full and tests I, i think till uh, 15th may so just uh, 10 days before your actual exam and in the schedule i also have mentioned some of the other unconventional topics also like geography mapping international relations because they are asking more questions from international relations point of view not uh, uh, your mains point of view but factual questions from international relations and even agriculture so questions are from agriculture because agriculture is not uh, you usually you not usually study agriculture for prelims but somewhere they are asking some questions related to agriculture so i have all the topics which are not the conventional topics that you study from your uh, normal courses foundation course only from prelims point of view whatever the subject that you have to read and even you have current affairs class once in every two weeks so in one class uh, we'll try to cover two months current affairs okay so whatever that you need for prelims whether it is gs or csat most of the things we are trying to cover it so it is up to you how you use it so when you have mentorship sessions also it is up to you how you absorb some things how you learn your strategy how you learn your weaknesses and strengths all that is up to you how you use it okay so for this course you uh, i also need time that's why i'm trying to cover my other subjects in this month itself so that i'll be free from next month but your mentorship starts from uh, next week only so don't skip the mentorship because it is very important for you to understand yourself so in the mentorship sessions i am your just the mirror you will understand yourself so whatever your weaknesses are there whatever strengths you have that you will understand through that mentorship session i believe that is very important okay so honest students if you have any doubts so how many revisions are going to be done like one subject for one week so i believe usually if <clears throat> if you have already given attempt then at least i believe in a week you can revise a subject twice but if you are starting for the first time then i believe for the first timers you need one week to cover the subject but if possible from monday to friday try to complete the subject on saturday try to revise it okay and don't see this always even tell you in the mentor sessions don't worry about the marks in the test i will never judge a person with the marks in the test even i will never judge a person with the marks in the prelims also but what i'm saying is focus on the improvement test after test what kind of improvements that you are bringing in your attitude bringing in solving the questions that is very important rather than the marks okay so try to build your own strategies through tests tests are the platforms to identify your mistakes and improve your strategy okay so again i'll tell you we will try to frame questions similar to your pattern 
but I believe we will not be will not reach near to USA pattern because next year again they might change their pattern also. Okay. So what are the so class timings will be from five to seven thirty every usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So that I am giving alternative uh, day gap because for you also you need some time to prepare. Okay, so we will post the schedule in the group or you can ask the reception at India for IS for schedule, they will share it with the schedule, you can see for online students. Any other doubts? Okay, thank you and uh, it is starting from 16th Jan Tuesday. We will see you at 5 o'clock on 16th January.